Hey everyone, it's Karen with Yes Please Paper Crafts. And uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create uh, tabs that you can add to all of your paper pads. And uh, I started doing this with my 12 by 12 paper pads. And now I've also been adding it to my six by six and my six by eight paper pads. And what's awesome about it is um, that not only do you have a place to uh, list the manufacturer and the name of the paper pad, but it kind of acts as a handle if you store your paper pads on a shelf, you can use this and to pull it in and out of the shelf. Okay, so let's get started with making the tab. I wanted to mention before I move this and we get started, uh, was that uh, the tabs for the 6x6 paper pads are smaller than the ones that I did for the 12x12s. These are uh, 4 inches and then the smaller ones are 2.5 inches. So I just wanted to show you kind of the difference between those two uh, tabs. I'm going to be showing you the process that I use to make these uh, tabs for the paper pads. But um, you may not necessarily have um, the tools that I have. So I have a couple other ways that you can uh, do this. So first let me just share with you the way that I'm going to be doing these is by using these We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch boards. But if you don't have these available, I have a couple of other ways that you can actually create these tabs. So um, one of my viewers was nice enough to um, provide me with a cut file. She, well, she actually provided me with a cut file and with a silhouette file. And uh, the cut file was for the Cricut. Unfortunately, I couldn't put that file in the Facebook group. So um, we have a PNG file for the Cricut, which you can upload into Cricut. And we also have the silhouette cup ball. Now those, uh, that original file she gave me was for the paper pads, uh, the 12 by 12 paper pads. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the tab for the 6 by 8 and 6 by 6 paper pads in there as well. So there will be two files available for you guys if you want to uh, join the Facebook group. And I'll put a link to the Facebook group in the description of this video. You can join the group and um, then you'll have access to go to the file location and download uh, either the silhouette version or the uh, PNG file that you can use for either the Cricut or the Brother Scan and Cut. And uh, if you don't have an electronic cutting machine and you don't have an envelope punch board, you could also use the cut file and just uh, print that out and use it as a template. Um, so uh, those are kind of the three ways that you could create your own uh, tabs for the for the um, paper pads. I'm going to go through the process that I use to create this and how I attach it to the paper pad. And uh, you could do this uh, same process no matter which way that you do it, whether it be using an envelope punch board, using a Cricut or a Silhouette machine, or just using the download as a template to cut out the cardstock with scissors. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. Now what I did here is I have two pieces of cardstock. Um, this one is two and a half inches by three, and this one is four inches by three. And the difference here is that the smaller one is for the six by six and six by eight paper pads, and the larger one is for the 12 by 12. Now I don't have any 12 by 12 paper pads that need a tab. But I'm going to create one for you today so you can kind of get an idea of the process. Now when I attach it to this 6x6 paper pad, it's the same as doing it for the 12x12. I also have a video, if you go back, and I will link to that video in the description below. I have a video, it's my very first video, and I think it's called something like New Organization Series and 12x12 Paper Pad. And I did give a demo of how I created that 12x12 uh, tab for the 12 by 12 paper pad. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this uh, little two and a half by three inch square and I'm going to put it on the three inch because we're going to just divide this in half. I'm going to score this at the one and a half and you don't even need to have a scoreboard. You could just actually just fold this. We could just fold it like this and uh, you can do it this way too. You don't have to have a scoreboard. I just thought it was easier. This cardstock's a little thicker than this one. You do want to kind of use a heavier weight cardstock because I've done some with this cardstock, which is a little bit uh, flimsier than this one. And um, those tabs are not as sturdy. So I would definitely recommend using a heavier cardstock if you have it available. 
Okay, so once you get this um, in half, what we're going to do is I'm going to take the envelope punch board and I'm just going to put it in so that it lines up with the very end right here and I'm going to punch it. Now this is really hard to punch. So <laughs> it's going through two layers of cardstock. And I usually do it like that because it's really hard for me to punch it. But So what I'm doing is I put it in there. I line up that little uh, end point with the end of the cardstock. And then let me see if I can get it in frame here. What I'm doing is I'm taking it between my fingers like that. And I'm just pressing as hard as I can. <laughs> and uh, then you end up with something that looks like this. Okay, so what we're going to do next is I'm just going to cut off that little piece right there that's... Uh, kind of extra piece there and then we end up with the tab so that's the six by six or six by eight paper pad tab so for the 12 by 12 one what i'm going to do is use the bigger punch board and it's kind of the same process you're just going to line it up with the edge there and just punch this one's easier to punch that one's real it's tiny so it's hard to go through all those layers of cardstock but I managed to make it work <laughs> okay and so your larger one's going to look like this and you're just going to do the same thing you're just going to cut out that little tail on both sides all right let me get these out of my way we don't need any of this stuff anymore okay so whether you use the punch board or you use your Cricut or your silhouette to cut it out you're going to end up with a shape that looks like that. And um, now from here on out, the rest of the process should be the same. No matter if you cut it out with scissors, use the punch board, or uh, the electronic cutting machine. The next thing that we need to get is some packing tape. This is a clear shipping tape from Scotch. It's a heavy duty one. And I really like this particular one. It's easy to work with. I don't have to worry about it getting stuck to the roll and uh, having to spend time trying to peel it off the roll. I did lose my dispenser. I'm not really sure where it went. I kind of, it got lost somewhere in my house. So hopefully I won't, this won't fall onto the roll because um, I don't want to spend time trying to get it unstuck. <laughs> so we're going to try to just make do with this. I usually have a dispenser. It makes it a lot easier. What you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you're on a non-stick surface because you don't want to, to uh, get this stuck to anything you don't want it to be stuck to. And I'm just going to use my scissors because I don't have my dispenser. But you're going to take your label and we're just going to lay it over the center part. Now don't worry about if you have um, the parts here that are not covered by the tape. Because when we go to apply this, this tab to the paper pad, we will be... Um, taping it and it will the whole entire tab will get covered with packing tape so after we put that tape down what we're going to do is fold it in half and you're just going to want to make sure that you're lined up and just fold it in half like that okay and then we're just going to cut this tape off and go around and it's kind of almost like laminating it we're kind of laminating it using the packing tape it's going to make the late late that i keep trying to say label it's going to make the tab sturdier because you're going to be handling it a lot. You're going to be touching it and pulling on it. And so we want to try to make it as sturdy as possible. And uh, so we're just going to uh, protect it with the, the packing tape, the shipping tape. Okay, so once we have that, let's go ahead and do it for this other one as well. Oh, no. Oh, no, Mr. Bill. <laughs> it happened. See, but this is what's good about this better tape. Is hopefully I can just get it started without too much trouble. See, you can't do that with cheap tape. That is awesome tape. <laughs> it is awesome tape. Okay, so now we're going to put this right in the middle. And we're going to fold it over. And trim it off the end. Okay, so once we get this done... We're going to be making a label and then attaching the label. Now, if you don't have a label maker, you can use a Sharpie and just write on the directly onto this label because it is laminated with the tape. Um, you can use a Sharpie. And one of the tricks I'll show you, and I think I showed this in my other video, 
Okay, so if you're writing on here, say I want to write bow bunny, you know, make a mistake, and I write bow bunny with only one end, and I want to change it, you can just use some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. So this is my rubbing alcohol. And I'm just going to take this paper towel, and this Sharpie is an alcohol-based marker, and so you can just erase that right off of the label. So I'm always making mistakes, and so um, that was uh, something I was really excited to figure out that I could do. <laughs> okay, so we can either make a label and put the label here, or you can use a Sharpie and you can write directly onto this tab. Okay, so I created my label, and I'm just going to apply the label first. It's just easier, I think, to put the label on uh, before you attach the, this to the paper pad. So I'm just going to add that label on there. And uh, so that'll be done. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to attach this label to the paper pad. And so I'm going to be using an ATG gun. And uh, you don't need to worry too much about whether or not this is going to stay on there because you're going to be putting the packing tape on top of this and so it's going to keep it from coming off. Okay, so once we have that on. Now, my shelf, when I put my stuff on, on my bookshelf, it's going into the bookcase this way. So I want the tab to come out on this side. Now, if you were putting storing yours on your shelf this way with the cover facing toward your right, you would want to do it the opposite. So just be conscious of the fact of where you want the tab to actually, what side you want it to be on. Okay, so we're just going to open this up. And uh, one of the things that I learned about after I've been doing this, you know, tons of times, is that originally when I showed it doing the 12 by 12 paper pad, I did it like this and I was trying to fiddle around with it and line it up. It's actually much easier if you take the paper pad and you just slip this in like this. <laughs> So that you can see exactly where the bottom of the label is. So I just lined it up about to right there. Now you do want it to stick up a little bit because if you put the if you put this too far down, you're not going to have enough of a, a tab to pull on and you're not going to be able to see your label. So putting the label on first also gives you kind of a reference mark for where you should actually attach this to your paper pad. And then I'm just going to fold this down. And so now it is stuck to the paper pad. But there's going to be one more thing that we need to do. Because one of the things I found was, if I just do this, then eventually over time, this starts peeling up on the corners as it hits the other paper pads. So we're going to protect that by adding another piece of tape. Okay, so we're going to add another piece of tape. And we're going to do it not only on the back cover. I'm going to try to... Yep, it went back down. Shoot, I wish I could find my dispenser. I'm going to need to look for that. And then the other thing too is I would say I like to try to make sure it goes all the way across. So I put it on there and it's kind of hanging over. I'll just use my scissors to trim that off. Okay, now we're going to open it up and we're going to put it on the inside. Can you tell I've done this like a hundred times? <laughs> I have. <laughs> Okay, and I would say that if you're doing this process, the easiest thing to do would be to do kind of like a, uh, what do they call that, uh, assembly line. When you do an assembly line, like do all your, cut all your pieces of paper and then punch them out, um, uh, then apply them to the paper pad, then add your tape. It makes it so much easier if you just do it a little bit, you know, just do it to all your paper pads at the same time. Okay, and we're just going to put this second piece of tape on the inside cover like that. So now your your tab is completely protected. It's covered with the tape. And it's really attached to that paper pad, the back of it. So it's not going to go anywhere. And now you have a tab that you can use to pull your paper pad in and out of the bookshelf or cube or whatever you're going to store it in. So I hope that this video has helped you guys out there. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. If you would like to see more videos, please subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye now.